I'm draggy. Why? I changed my nutrition because he, he used to go, he, he, he was going vegan right, through right. every single one of his fights. And he always performed well. So I go, well, what, what are you changing? He goes, I'm changing a lot of things. Like what? He goes, I'm changing now. I'm, I'm eating meat. I'm eating this. I mean, I said, why? He goes, coach. He goes, <clears throat> people tell me that, you know, the reason why I was, I performed like this with Manny on this fight and then the first one is because I'm not eating the proper foods. I said, okay, when you fight, when you fight Marquez, when you fight Provanica, when you have, when you fight everybody else, how did you feel? I feel great. I go, why are you gonna fix something that's not broken? First of all, let me tell you something. A lot of people are trying to dip their spoon in your plate. If you listen to everybody, you're gonna be confused. If you have a question, come and ask me. I can answer your question. I'm the closest person to you. Ask me. And he goes, what do you think the problem was? I go, the problem is not your nutrition. The problem is not your training. The problem is the high intensity of, of opponent that you had in front of you. I mean, when you have when you have a Manny Pacquiao in front of you, believe me, things change. Why? Because that guy keeps you on the on the on, on, on the tip of your toes. You know, Manny Pacquiao is a fighter that you know he's always he's so intense at a high level that that you don't know where he's at. I mean, I go remember the first time when you fought him. He goes, yeah. What did you tell me that, when you got out of the ring and then we we're at home? He, he didn't you say, Coach, that guy throws so many punches and I was like, oh shit, you were moving. He says, what you tell me? That you hear like somebody was shooting bullets at you? Like, whoosh, you hear him? Okay, that's the high intensity that Manny Pacquiao brings. And the reason why is a high intensity fighter, it's at another level of stage that you're in. The spotlight is high, high uh, it's a high uh, intensity. I said, your body just fatigued because of the intensity of the moment. And he goes, you're right. Go back to what you were doing. So look at him. He went back. He's vegan. He's he feels good. He you know he's not feeling draggy anymore. Yeah, because right. at a, at this point of, of, of a fighter's career, everybody has an opinion. If you have a hundred people in the, in the room and you're there, everybody's gonna give you a different opinion, and everybody's gonna tell you he's wrong because they want to be right. And that's just the way it is in boxing, in boxing and everything, you know. But Joe, you've been with Bradley from day one, from the moment he he became a pro. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Even before. Even before. How did you turn him into? To one of the best fighters in the world. Why? Because. No. How did you do it? How did I do it? Uh, it's not. It's not the training only. You know. It's. It's about Tim Bradley uh, growing up right. along my side. You know. I was training my brother Antonio, my brother Julio, and just mentoring him. You know. At the time, I would tell him, and I. And if I go back and I tell him, look, Tim. If you hey, want to please one, the proud, two, you have to fight one, like that guy. Two, if you hey, want to fight hey. this guy, you gotta fight like that guy. Hey. Let me give you a little quick, uh, uh, a little quick uh, thing that happened one time. I was taking him to, to Mexicali that? for with a nutritionist, which that All nutritionist right. was Julio hey, Cesar Chavez's hey. doctor through his career. Hey, hey, that hey. was Doctor Barat. And then one day, check, check, <clears throat> bringing him check. over and just uh, right. putting check. that that in one, his mind, Tim. Two, you want to hey, sell? Hey. You want to please nah, the crowd? You have to fight. How? Like. Like fucking Mexicans, you know? Hey. You gotta have that shit. And then he goes, okay, coach, we're in the office with Dr. Barack. And then the doctor was sitting in the seat and Tim was here and I was here. And then and then Tim has asked questions. He goes, doctor, you were with Julio Cesar Chavez through his career? Yes. What made that guy good? And then he goes, look, Tim, when Chavez was in his prime, he says, that guy had two balls. Two big balls. He had, he had one of steel check, and one of solid steel. wood. And Tim went like this. Tim, Tim went like this. He goes, check, check, check. I got him. And he, he, gets like, <laughs> he gets like this close to the doctor's face and he tells him, but oh, with, a real, with a real serious face, he goes, I got him. And he goes, Tim, okay, Testing. if you want to be a, a crowd pleaser, you got to have the check, balls. Check. And he goes, one, I got him. But he's like, wait, yeah. relax. Check, <laughs> one, relax. You know, but th those are the things that, that with time, you tell your fighter, hey, Tim, this is the way it is. I mean, I started telling Tim a lot of things as far as uh, his lifestyle. You know, it's not only training. You gotta, you gotta mentor them outside, the, outside the sport. And I did a lot of things that he comes back and tells me uh, 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 once in a while. Hey, coach, I remember when you told me this. I remember because we all went through it. We all went through it. You know, uh, in this sport, fame brings friends. Friends bring problems. You know, when you start making money, you start gathering a big crowd of people because they want to be part of you. But at the same time, being part of you, there's only so many that are there because you know because because they're your real friends, and there's some that are there because they're there because they're interest in something, and he knows that because I talked to him many many years. You know, he did great in, in investments. He's put his money in the right spots. Tim, if Tim Tim if Tim retires today, he's good. 
he's good forever for the rest of his life because he's done and he always says hey coach i remember he used to tell me i said yeah because i've seen it i've seen it with, with some of the fighters i work with in the past so all that puts together a package and makes what Tim is nowadays, you know? Because I would tell him, hey, Tim, watch this fight and watch this fight. You want to sell? You want to please the crowd? This is what you're going to do. You know, it gets to a point where, you know, Tim could Tim could, uh, could just make boring fights. That Ruslan Provanica fight, honestly, Tim could have made it a boring fight where people are like, ah, that would have changed the channel. If we would have just <laughs> decided to just box box Provanica and just move in circles. Provanica can only hit you if you stand in front of us. So there is... You know? But that's just the way it is.